buy out your lease without going to the car dealer. Such good news. That is right, you can entirely avoid going back to the dealership. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth, who has earned the distinction of being the homework gal here on this <laughs> channel, to discuss buying out your lease. No matter what you do, don't let it go back to the dealer. That car is such a good deal compared to current market values. We do hope to give you enough quality in this video today so that you consider subscribing if you're not already on board with us. Buy out your leased car without going back to the dealer. If you enjoy your leased vehicle, it's only natural that you want to keep it. And especially now in this overinflated car market, it's likely And you know who's been driving it and who's been farting on the seat and all that kind of stuff. I suppose. It's likely to be a great buy because the price you'll pay for it was predetermined back when you leased the car in a much more normal car market. Lease buyouts are very common, especially now. Deciding whether to keep your leased vehicle is only the first step. Next, you need to know what the payoff or residual value is and then obtain financing for it. Expect to pay tax, title, and licensing fees on the balance due common to a vehicle purchase. But we started the show off by saying you can avoid the dealership entirely in most cases. So we want to show you how to do it. So Kevin took the time to do a phone interview with a company who can help you do just that and skip all the fees and extra expense and the runaround that you get from dealers. It's called leaseend.com. Here it is. Lease End, this is Matt. Hello, Matt. This is Kevin Hunter. I'm also known as the homework guy on YouTube, and I give consumers uh, buying and selling advice for cars, particularly dealing with dealerships. And one of the frequent questions that I've had online here have been how car buyers have been treated by dealerships when going in and trying to buy out their lease end. So I've been looking for additional options for car buyers and found your website, leaseend.com. And so I wanted to chat with you about how your process works and how it can make it easier for the consumer. Okay. Um, so you did check out our website, right? Yes. Yeah, so I, I understand your basic process of what you guys go through. So somebody can either contact you just by going through the website at leaseend.com and enter their VIN number and then go through the appropriate steps or they could do it via a phone call like I'm doing here today. Absolutely, yes. Okay, so first of all, one of the things I want to confirm right off the bat is there is generally no need for the consumer to go back to the dealer that they leased the car from. They could exercise their buyout of their lease through an organization like yours. Except for a couple exceptions, but yes. Okay, so my follow-up question to that would be then, what what's in it for you? What's in it for lease and to do this service for the car buyer? Oh, easy enough. We provide financing. Got it. So we are, we make money off of, uh, off of lending. Just Very like good. Any other, like a dealership would the same, same way. We also provide extended warranties or service contracts, gap insurance. So really anything they could get going through a dealer finance office, they could get going through you. Pretty much. All right. We don't provide any kind of like a maintenance plan. Um, because we deal with the entire nation. So a singular dealership can provide something like that with the expectation the customer's going to stay in that area and come back and get their service done there. Right. Okay. So let's talk about somebody needs to have their VIN number either when they make this call or before they log into the website. And that's readily available right on the lower dash of the vehicle or in the door jam of the vehicle um, or even on the title for that matter. So they need the VIN number and kind of walk me through the steps of how, of what they need to do and how your process works. Well, it's really simple. They, I mean, if they're just online, uh, you could easily just go grab a VIN number and go halfway through that and, and you could see what that process is like. Uh, but the real simple explanation of what we do is we, we have to in some way obtain the current payoff on that vehicle's lease. Okay. So that's step one. Yep. And... Uh, I mean, every manufacturer has different means of going about this. So we have a utility here that's basically a stair step process for our inbound agents to ask what type of vehicle it is. And then from there, they can ask the appropriate questions that they need answered in order to get the payoff. Got it. We have the payoff then, and, the, and our website and our, our inbound call um, center process is the same. Mm -hmm. So once the once the payoff is obtained, then the customer. This is different from a dealership. Then the customer is given a basic quote uh, or a range that they can expect for their payment. 
And I imagine the various terms of financing that are available through a dealership they could accomplish through you, what whatever might be available on that particular vehicle. Yeah. Um, it, it depends on, you know, from different lenders and different dealerships, uh, who their lending partners are, of course. But um, my experience with dealerships and is that they're going to be similar in the way that they're going to have a variety of different lenders that they use. Right. Okay. But anyway, so once the, they have the payoff, they have the basic quote on, as to what they can expect their payments and if they want to move forward, then we go ahead and correct, uh, collect the information needed on the credit application. And then from there, um, we get them approval, review their approval with them, and then they sign their documentation. And the chances are that if somebody qualified for a lease and their current lease candidate, they're likely to qualify for end financing on the car. Yeah, you would think so. I would say, that I don't know the exact percentage there, but I mean, there's some people that obviously have a leased vehicle, but, you know, life hasn't treated them so well in the last year or something. And, sure. You know, they don't qualify, but, you know, things happen. But otherwise, yeah, you could expect that. So there's one of two options here. Either you can assist the... Uh, current leased customer in buying the vehicle out for themselves or you guys might possibly be interested in purchasing the vehicle. Is that correct? That is correct. Mm -hmm. We do that frequently. Okay. Now, so these, are, these are people that want to avoid their turn-in fees or they just want to avoid the dealership period. Um, there may be, there's typically some positive equity in the vehicle and so we'll, that goes to a separate department that we have that handles that. Especially right now, there's typically positive equity in the vehicle. Yeah. So let's um, let's visit just for a moment here and have a couple of questions that I put together. So are, are you aware of the fact that right now in the country, dealers are tacking on huge fees to lease cars being turned in? Um, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousand bucks. Uh, they're even requiring that people at the end of their lease have their car inspected and even certified, like entered into a CPO program, even if they're buying buying it out. And I'm aware of the fact, as perhaps you are, that by law on the Consumer Leasing Act 15 USC, passed in 1976, every fee and expense and price of the vehicle is supposed to be predisclosed on the lease contract. So this is actually something against the law that dealers are doing. And this is the reason why consumers reach out to somebody like me to help them navigate that territory. Yeah, I've come across that. In fact, you know, a lot of our customers will talk about how they went to a dealership. And the most common thing that they'll see in it is one, a purchase option fee. And I've seen that, um, I think the highest I ever saw was like $2,500 or that I didn't physically see, but someone was telling me. Wow. Um, and then the inspection is, that's a very common te technique. I think the inspection, not only do they charge for that, um, but I think they also put that in their dealership process. So they bring the vehicle in, they pull it around back. Now the customer has to wait. So they pull up a, you know, shiny, smelling good new car, mm -hmm. try to get them on a test drive and pull them back into the, you know, a new buying process. Yeah. So I think, you know, there's a couple things along the lines there, but yeah, I do, I am aware. So uh, you guys take care of all the, the documentation that, and I also noticed that in the, um, after the signatures and all that kind of stuff are obtained that you guys take care of sending out all the, the, the license plates, registration forms, et cetera, in the mail to the consumer? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's pretty seamless from top to bottom and it sounds to me like you make this process pretty easily. I, I'm, I'm pretty impressed given what I'm aware of that uh, consumers go through with regard to dealing with dealers. This this is a kind of a no-brainer process for people to buy out a lease. It is, and the dealers really drive a lot of business to us, and, and particularly for dealerships that are not, I guess, more new age. Right. Um, so, and it seems like dealerships in general have a tendency to be passed down from family to the next generation, and so a lot of the 1975 techniques you will still find today. Right. Um, and the general consumer doesn't want to be treated like that anymore, so that's very common. Also, we can be done, uh, I mean, the, the time spent for the customer on the phone or on our website can be as little as maybe 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and, we'll, and they'll be funded and some paperwork signed. The 
title and registration process that varies per state and so i mean that's there's some differences there on how long that takes but because it's like you said seamless it is completely seamless to the customer they don't do anything um it just shows up in the mail eventually so right well i like the fact that you're saving the consumer the headache of going to the dealership and you also spare them the hassle of waiting in the lines over at dmv to get that stuff done too yeah i, I mean it's we have I, you probably if you look up our reviews and such i mean we're, i you know you can read on the better business bureau or google um nerd wallet is posting an article about us and it'll be out there but we have countless customers that are blown away at how easy this was and or two we have some customers that feel like sometimes that they're that we're not done because it was so easy right like they didn't you know, the, you know what i mean it's 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 comical because everyone's been trained that you're going into a dealership and there's something that's going to happen behind closed doors that's going to take forever and getting into a finance person is going to be whatever amount of weight and you know they they really slow down consumers as part of the you know old school technique in my opinion but mm -hmm. um we're just basically 100 percent the opposite you know it's interesting when you mention these generational uh dealerships where you know it was in the family back in the 70s etc and those habits have really been carried along for generations and for many years we will occasionally get car salesmen come on our channel and say hey the stuff that you say that dealers are doing to consumers uh, has long since stopped happening. It's like, well, that's what you think. But we we receive thousands and thousands of comments, you know, almost on a daily basis from consumers all over the United States with huge complaints about dealers. And I suspect what you mentioned, um, that those old habits are not lost by the uh, incoming uh, generations and, and they're still, still uh, deployed. Absolutely. And I think there's, um, you know, there's some big dealership training groups that are out there. I mean, Joe Verde being the most common. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one, like for finance, called George Angus. But even inside, if if you ever take the time to go watch any of those trainings, they have probably some sample videos. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's techniques that I see in there that isn't how a, a consumer these days wants to be treated, and they're still just following the same processes and it's interesting we we do a fair number of reviews of sales training videos here on this channel and our folks really enjoy those ask us for you know hey bring bring another one of those up um but yeah it's very um a very predatory unfriendly kind of process and as i share with people uh one of the things that happens in a dealership after a customer gets really really gouged on a car deal is that salesmen will actually high five each other and use the phrase we really tore that guy's head off it's it's an ugly phrase but that's that's the description of what they just did to that customer and they high five each other over the accomplishment mm -hmm. yeah they called a head ripper yeah all right matt well i really appreciate first of all jordan who i talked to sounds like he's new at the organization and passed me along to you i really appreciate uh him doing that and the, your knowledge of your process, the in-depth knowledge that you have is, is really appreciated. And we'll pass this along to our viewers. And I can very safely say we will recommend uh, Lease End for our viewers to go to to get to cash in on their leases. And what, is, what again, is the website that I can look up for you? We are on YouTube, The Homework Guy. So that's where it will be shared. And this video will be completed. We have a couple of news stories that we're sharing with this as well. But it'll be completed here in the next couple of days. Okay, so is this you with the uh, sweatshirt and uh, a beard going on? That's correct. Okay. All right. Oh, I just subscribed to you. You got a new subscriber, man. All right. Thank you much. Take care. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh -huh. Yep. Bye-bye. Okay. Nice job, Kevin. Your background doing radio interviews really shows. Thanks. And Matt did an exceptional job, too, yeah. and clearly knows the car business well. Okay, some takeaways. You notice he mentioned that car trainers are teaching sales staff techniques that are not really how customers like to be treated? No kidding, huh? Yeah, no kidding. And then he mentioned dealerships that have been in a given family for years. So they have the bad habits from the 70s that just keep getting handed down generation after generation. So the problems are still existing today. 
You notice that I jumped on that right away when he said it. <laughs> For many of you sales trainers who publish a lot of videos like Steve Richards and Andy Elliott, just to name a few, well, the 70s called and they'd like their predatory sales techniques back. Yikes. Okay. Now, if you're still wondering what kinds of problems you can avoid by going through leaseend.com instead of a dealer, check out this story from Channel 10 News out of Florida. It's eye-opening. Yeah. And now to a local 10 investigation we've been following involving an uptick in the number of people hit with unexpected fees while trying to buy out their car lease. Tonight, a South Florida attorney says if you paid a dealer fee, you may be entitled to your money back. Local 10 investigator Jeff Weinsier has what you need to know. Out their leases, but some are finding themselves knocked out of the driver's seat. You saw our story and you wanted your money back. Yes, of course, yeah. Rafael Fernandez is talking about this $995 fee. The dealer calls it a pre-delivery service charge. Back in December, instead of turning in his 2018 GMC pickup at the end of the lease, like so many nowadays, he decided to buy it. He actually saw this fee on the deal and he did question it. I literally went in there and just signed paperwork and you guys kept me a whole day doing this. The truck never a whole moved. Day. So they were like, well, that's the way, you know, that's the charge that we have to do. I'm like, okay, all right. I mean, at this point, I'm at their mercy. Here is the problem. That fee isn't on Fernandez's original lease. The lease uh -huh. does include the residual value for the pickup, but a pre-delivery service charge of $995 appears nowhere. So we went to Brickle Motors on 8th Street where Fernandez originally leased and bought the pickup. Are you charging me a dealer fee? Yes. That's not in the original lease. No, it doesn't matter. It's cost of doing business. It does put matter. Into the deal. Look at the, I mean, we can look at deals one by one. I don't mind doing it with you and showing you there's nothing to hide. You're telling me if it's not in that initial lease agreement, they cannot now charge me a dealer fee. Absolutely. Attorney Joshua Fagan takes on car dealerships for a living. A lot of the questions that I have gotten today is, I paid this dealer fee six months ago. Can I get this money back? Most certainly you can. Fagan says a federal regulation called the Consumer Leasing Act, mm -hmm. enacted in 1976, requires all terms of a lease including anything you'd have to pay every dealer's had a chance to read this by now which would include yeah. any sort of buyout provision at the end of the term if it's not in the lease they can't charge it so what uh -huh. they're doing is illegal it's wrong it can't be done what is it what exactly is it in, in my opinion it is 100 percent illegal attorney johnny kane filed a complaint with broward county after gunther vw not only wanted to charge him a dealer fee to buy out his lease they were actually forcing him to have his car certified by their mechanics before they would sell it to him, which would be another <laughs> Nonsense. additional it's fee his car. that was not disclosed. Because he fought it, he didn't have to pay or have the car certified. In the past, Kane and others would simply turn in their lease and lease another vehicle. I don't think that these issues ever came up before. I'm seeing it a lot more now than any other time in my practice. Consumer Leasing Act affords a consumer not only uh, reimbursement of their actual damages, which is the amount of the overcharge, but also up to $2,000 in statutory damages, as well as their attorney's fees. In Florida, finance companies and banks don't have a dealer's license, so they force you to buy out your lease at a dealer. Really, it's just a matter of consumers being educated about their rights and not falling for the high pressure sales tactics that most of these dealerships employ. Jeff Weinseer, Local 10. Well, the good news here is that for those of you who got burned by fees and other ridiculous charges when you bought out your lease at the dealer, you have money coming back. Do you have the intestinal fortitude to go back and demand a refund? The dealer who hosed you violated the Consumer Leasing Act 15 USC passed in 1976. So Kevin, going back to your interview with Matt from leaseend.com, there you go folks. A very simple streamlined system that takes just minutes to go through. As Matt said, it happens so fast that people are surprised when it's over. So avoid all the nonsense dealers are putting you through and buy out your lease without even going to the dealership. We do recommend leaseend.com. Yes, we do. And if you enjoyed the video today, we appreciate you giving us a great big thumbs up. And please remember to comment and share with family and friends. And if you're not already on board with us, please don't forget to subscribe. And I would encourage Matt because he'll watch this video. 
Uh, Matt, please go into the comment section and feel free to answer any questions people have in our comments. For sure. The entire Homework Guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer, and that's what we strive to do in every video we produce. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off with the amazing Elizabeth, the Homework Gal. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.